So we know that Jesus knew he had one month to live. We know that we might do things differently if we were given that news. But, but it's interesting that, that when you pick out from the Gospels what Jesus was up to, where he was going, where he was headed to with just one month to live. And, and if you read the Gospels, he was inching his way ever so surely he was teaching his way back to Jerusalem where he was going to be at the epicenter of human redemption, where he was going to lay his life down for me and you. And there's sometimes I think that I hear our culture speak and I, I hear different things. Uh, and it's like, it's like God was um, like, they slipped this in when the Romans killed Jesus. Listen, folks, if you look at the third chapter of the Bible, Genesis 3.15. Do I have that up? Yeah, Genesis 3.15. The very third chapter of the Bible, right? Here's what we find out. It's the very first messianic prophecy. And I will put enmity between you and the woman. God is speaking to Satan and he's speaking to Adam and Eve. And I will put enmity. I will make you enemies between you and the woman and between your offspring, Satan, and hers. Who is going to be the offspring of Eve. More importantly, Jesus. Yeah. And then he says this. He will crush your head, Satan. Her offspring, Jesus, my son, will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Three chapters into the Bible. This isn't, this isn't a mess up with one month to live, he's not going. And, and all of a sudden, God didn't uh, plan, you know, God, God didn't plan on, on the Romans, uh, you know, executing Jesus. No, no, it was planned from the very beginning. This is how he was going to redeem your life. He was gonna send his son. And so Jesus, we don't wanna step on Bibles. Uh, Jesus is, uh, is teaching his way back to Jerusalem. And I, I want you to know that all scripture... All scripture is leading to this very moment. It just is. If you go to the Bible, and, and listen, I, I, I hear people say sometimes, I, I read the Bible, but I, I just don't understand it. Listen, if you open up God's word and you say, God, show me Jesus in these passages, he's there. He's there in anyone you read. And if you go to the Bible looking for Jesus, it will open up for you like no time ever before. So pray with me as we get started. Father, we thank you for this day. We love you. We ask you to open our hearts. We ask you to open our minds today as we open up your word and all God's people said, amen. amen. Now, last week we, we opened up and we peeked into a passage of scripture in Mark chapter 10, and we found out that Jesus was talking to a rich guy, and we looked at that conversation that he had. Anybody remember that? I know it's been a week. Wow, you guys really need to take some like mushrooms or something to, you know, I heard like mushrooms can boot, not, not the bad kind, don't go there. They say mushrooms can help boost your memory. Maybe you need some, just say it. Anyway, we, we talked about this rich young guy and, 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 and so right there in Mark chapter 10, there's, a, there's at, the end of, uh, at the end of chapter nine in Mark, there's this passage where, Peter asks a question. Well, it also shows up in Matthew's gospel just the exact same way. And so we're going to be reading from that today. And we have to read this in portion before we get to Matthew chapter 20. Here's what, after all this rich young guy talk, and Jesus is like, hey, it's going to be hard for rich people to get to heaven. It's going to be easier from the camel to go through the eye and needle than it is for a rich guy to enter the kingdom of God. And all of us are like, oh, oh, hold on a second. Because we have a lot. Amen? Amen? How are we going to do it? And, and here's, here's what Peter says. Peter answered him, we have left everything to follow you. Have you ever had that moment where you're like praying for something and you remind God, God, listen, did you not forget I did this for you? Oh, I'm the only one that does that, right? You never do that. You never negotiate, 
right? Yeah, that's what Peter's doing. We have left everything to follow you. And then he asks this question, what then will there be for us? What then will there be for us? He wants evidence, correct? Say it from Jesus' mouth. I want to hear from you, Jesus, Messiah, Rabbi, God's Son. What's there going to be for us? Because we've left everything for you. And then Jesus responds to him. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Moving on. And everyone, and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or fields for my sake, listen, will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. This is what I want you to pay attention to. I want you to pay attention to all of it, but really, if you forget anything, listen to this. And then he ends this little paragraph, this little conversation, and he says, but... Many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. And then he transitions in Matthew. That's the end of Matthew 19. And then he transitions into a new chapter. It's really not like a chapter. We, Matthew didn't write it this way. It's more like a letter, right? He's just going on to the next topic. And then Jesus teaches this. Keep in mind, keep in mind what Peter just asked Jesus, we've left everything for you. We've left everything for you to follow you. We've done it. We've left it all. Remember, Jesus, he says, what is there going to be for us? And Jesus says this, for the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. Has anybody ever read this passage? Anybody? Okay, good. Good. If you haven't, your homework this week is to go read Matthew chapter 20. And then he, here's what he says. And he agrees. He's, he goes out. He fight, he's going out in the morning to find some people to work his vineyard. And he agreed to pay them a denarius. A denarius, if you look back, uh, is a day's wages. It's a day's wages. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About, the, about nine in the morning... These guys, have, the, the first guys, listen, the first guy's been working since six. About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. And he told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. And he went out again about noon and about three. So this is what, the six, the nine, the noon and three. He's went out four times to the marketplace to find workers for his vineyard. And he did the same thing, it says, moving on. And about five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. And he asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? You ever heard that? You ever been asked that question? Has your dad ever said that? What you still doing in bed? Why, you do, why aren't you doing anything, right? Because, and they said this, because no, one who, no one's hired us. They answered, he said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. Remember Jesus' words? Keep that right there. Remember Jesus' words at the end of that, what Peter asked him? For many of the first will be last and many of the last will be first. Jesus says, beginning with the last ones hired and going to the first. And the workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. Leave it up there. Did you hear what, did you hear what he said? They received a full day's pay. They worked one hour. Moving on. So when those came who were hired first, you understand where the tension is at this, right? Oh, I love tension. Tension's good, right? You can't have a good story without tension. If everything's just great, nobody was like, yeah, boring, moving on. But now those who came and were hired first, they expected, yeah, what, what'd they expect? They wanted more. 
but each one of them also received a denarius. Moving on here. And when they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. Leave that right there. Of course they did. Amen. Amen. Of course they did. Hey, landowner. Hey, farmer. What's going on here? Those of you who ever bailed hay when you were a kid, you were out there at the beginning and then some joker comes with one hour left, you would expect the guy you were working for to pay up a little more for you. Amen? Amen. Moving on. These who were hired last worked only one hour. This is the guy talking to Jesus. And they said, you have made them equal to us and have bo- equal to us that have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered them, but he answered them, but he answered them. Am I not, am I being unfair to you, friend? I like that. Am I being unfair to you, friend? Didn't you agree to work for Denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the ones who were hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I, what I want with my own money? Or he ends it by this way. Or are you envious because I am generous? And then listen, the la- very last one. Listen, remember how this, this, is, this whole parable is bookended by the exact, almost the exact same phrase. And Jesus says this again. So the last will be first and the first will be last. He starts his teaching with the very same words. He says, many who are last... And then he ends it by saying, so the last will be first and the first will be last. Now, I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but um, on the surface, I think this landowner needs to learn something about how to operate a business. Right? I mean, we can poke holes. I mean, listen, I know Jesus was teaching this. Right? And I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad about Jesus, but I'm just talking about in my culture and in our worldview. You're like, hey, listen, hey, listen, landowner, in Jesus' great story. Listen, maybe you might want to learn about how to run a business. Because listen, if you keep treating your employees like this, right, there is not going to be any for you. Matter of fact, they're going to get the union involved, right? And they're going to sign up and you're going to have to pay way more than you thought. Because these folks have rights. You ever thought you had a right in the fun when you hear people say, I, I got rights. I mean, they, they always yell it when they, you can't say, I've got rights. No, you have to, you're all caps when you say it, right? You're all caps all the time. I've got rights. And I, you know, you look at this, this story and like, yeah, I, I don't. I don't know if this makes any sense, and, but, but it starts making so much sense when you, when you find out what Peter was really asking at the beginning in, in Matthew uh, 19. Uh, we've left everything for you. What's there going to be for us? What's there going to be for us? It makes us uncomfortable, right? It makes us uncomfortable. What's there going to be for us, Jesus? We've been here forever. Jesus teaches in, in, in John's gospel uh, about the lost coin, the lost sheep, and the lost son. Anybody ever read those? Uh, you remember the, the lost son? Remember he goes out uh, and, he, and he spends his dad's money uh, on crazy stuff, right? And, 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 he, and he finds himself eating with the pigs, right? Anybody relate, right? Anybody relate to that? Yeah, yeah. Some of us have lived that, haven't we, right? And he goes home and the dad's looking for him, right? The dad hasn't like kicked him to the curb. He's looking for him every day and he sees him coming over the horizon and he runs to his boy. And he hugs him and he smells like pig poop. Right? But he hugs him. And he tells the servants, listen, we're having a party. Get a robe on my boy. Get some shoes on my kid. Put a ring on his finger and kill that cow because we're having fillets tonight. And then we hear that this guy in Jesus' story of the lost son has an older son, don't we? He ain't so happy, is he? Right? What's he say? What's he say to his dad? I've, I've, I've never left you. Dad, I've never left you. 
and yet I can't even get a goat slaughtered for a party with my friends. And the father says, listen, son, all I've ever had has always been yours. Wow, that seems like a really, really close, close, I mean, it seems like it's the very same thing, right? I think one of the most things that we struggle with with God is the fact that he is sovereign. And you see it all through scripture, right? That he is sovereign. And, and, I, and I, don't, I can give you the definition. I got it right here. Exer- if you're sovereign, you exercise power without limitation. Someone who can exercise power without limitation. That is God, amen? I mean, he creates, he creates, he creates, he speaks, he speaks, right? He could have, when, when he picked Abraham, he could have picked any person on the face of the earth, correct? But he, but he picked Abraham. He picked Abraham. And he picked the Hebrew people. Right? He picks them and he, and he, and he, he picks them and he, he makes a covenant with them that, that I'm gonna be your God and you're gonna be my people. And, and we can sit on the outside and say, well, why didn't you pick these other people? It's not fair. And man, isn't that, man, isn't that like the chant of our culture and our generation? Right? It's not fair. It's not fair. And, and, and listen, I, I'm not telling you I don't struggle with the sovereignty of God. I do. I do. I wonder why. Why, why, are, why are children being trafficked, Father? God Almighty, why do you allow this? Right? All these injustices and, and, and pain and, and, and loss of life. Why does this happen? And you see people deconstructing their faith all over uh, uh, the, the socials and, and because, uh, you know, it's not fair. It's not fair. This isn't fair. I don't believe in, you know, we hear people say they're going to throw away their faith because they don't believe that it was actually seven twenty or six 24-hour days that God created the world. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Really? Oh, maybe it's just me. I didn't hit the way I wanted it to. Exercising power without limitation. And I kind of want to, I kind of want to give you uh, some truth today. You're not sovereign. I'm not sovereign. I can't exercise power without limitation. I can't, I can't do it. And so, you know, when Peter asked the question, he didn't get the answer that he wanted. Jesus didn't answer Peter verbatim. He didn't specifically respond to his question. Hey, Jesus, we've left everything for you. What is there going to be for us? Jesus taught, and he teaches about this landowner. And I want you to, the first thing I want you to, to focus on, and, and in the first, you don't have to pull it up. I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll just wing it off the, off the dome. It always happens good that way. Uh, the first people who were hired at the beginning of the day God, let's just, let's, just, let's just put this to where it needs to be. This is a parable about God and his people, right? The landowner negotiates a price. I'll give you a denarius for your day's work. He goes out at nine, at noon, at three, and at five, and all those other people, there is no negotiated price. It's just this, I'll pay you what's right, Right? I'll pay you what's right. And, and if you look at this, you, you look at, 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 the, at, the, at the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, you read your Old Testament, right? Anybody like the Old Testament? I love the Old Testament. You read the Old Testament, and we know that God picked the children of Israel. We know that was his people, right? He picked them. And he told Abraham way back in Genesis, I'm gonna make you the father of many nations. I'm gonna make your descendants like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. And then we get to the gospels, right? We get to the gospels. And there's a lot of people who wanna put extra emphasis on being religious in God's economy. 
the Pharisees, the Sadducees, making all these other rules, all this, all this other weight they're hanging on people, right? All this stuff you had to do, right? That, that wasn't the way it was intended to be, right? It wasn't. It wasn't. And, and I, two weeks ago, I, I mentioned this Acts 15, 19. Remember that. Put that. If you need to write it down, write it down. Read Acts 15, 19, right? And I think we read it. Uh, there were some Jews that went down to Antioch, right? And they were telling the Gentile people, they weren't Jews. They weren't Jews. They weren't Jews. They were telling them, yeah, we heard you found the Holy Spirit. We heard God blessed you with it. But you're really not a Christian yet. You're really not a follower yet until you get circumcised. And then remember, remember Paul and Barnabas were there and there was a, there was a sharp, the sharp debate. And they said, well, we got to send you to Jerusalem and you got to talk to the council. So they went to Jerusalem and then James, the half brother of Jesus was there. And he says this in Acts 15, 19, he says, I think that we don't need to make it difficult for Gentiles turning to God. Wow. Right. We don't need to make it difficult for Gentiles turning to God. We need to make it not easy, but we need to make it easy. You see what I'm saying? Listen, because listen, living a life for Christ, tell me that's not hard enough, right? Saying no to your flesh is difficult, correct? Somebody say amen. We don't need to hang all this other stuff on them, like what you have to wear, what you have to talk like. You better not look like that. You better not cut your hair like that. You better not wear that coat. You better not have tattoos. You better not blah, 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 and blah. Right? God is sovereign. Let's not make it difficult for Gentiles turning to God. That, that's what, that's, that, that's what, uh, that's t- number two. Uh, that's what, uh, that, that's what James says. That's what James says. And then listen to second Peter three, nine. Here's what we get. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone. Somebody say not wanting, anyone. not wanting anyone. anyone to perish, but everyone, everyone to come to repentance. Only good people? Only people who look like they got it going on? Only people with a lot of money? Only people with great kids that make great decisions all the time? Only kids that go to great, the best universities? No. Anyone and everyone. This is, this is what Yahweh is saying. I want everybody to come to repentance. Everybody. The story that Jesus is telling, right? It's pretty, it's, it's, it's pretty telling in itself. Uh, I'm going to ruin this Bible by keep stepping on it. But this story is, it's like, this is what we think, right? This is what we think. I've been doing this. I've been doing this longer than you. I've been doing it. And I know I got my stuff together. What's there going to be there for me? What's going to be there for me, Jesus? Because I've been doing this a long time for you. I'm going to need to get paid. I need my check on Friday. And then we have, we, we've got writing in, uh, in Romans chapter 11 where, where Paul is, is, is communicating with the church in Rome. And these are Gentile people. And he says this, if, if some of the branches have been broken off, this is, we're talking about Jewish people, right? Read the chapter. If some of the branches have been broken off and you, though wild olive shoot, talking about Gentiles, have been grafted in among the others and how, and I'm, my, my contacts are messing up. And now share in the nourishing sap from the olive root. Keep going. Do not consider yourself to be superior. Listen to what he's saying. Leave that right up there. He's telling Gentile people, just because God broke off Jewish people and then let you in the family, and that's why you're here today, because God did that. In his his grace and his mercy, he has let you in the family as non-Jews. You've been grafted into the plant, into the olive tree. He goes on to say here, do not consider, he says, uh, do not consider yourself to be superior to those other branches. If you do, consider this. You do not support the root, but the root supports you. Moving on. 
You will say then, branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. That's what we always say, don't we? I'm so good, God had to put me in. But he goes on and says this, granted, but they were broken off because of unbelief. And you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant, he says, but tremble. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Folks, we can't be proud. We can't be proud of our stance in the economy of God. I mean, what am I getting at here, right? What am I getting at? I'm talking about, listen, sometimes we become very prideful with what we've done for God. And we take that, right? And because, because Jesus says in this passage, because Jesus says in this passage, he says to the, the guy that was grumbling, don't I have the right to do with my money what I want to? And man, if that doesn't speak to Western Christians, I don't know what does, right? Because we see that all the time. I got the right to do with my money what I want to. We're like, yes, that is correct, Jesus. You taught correctly. But you're not sovereign. You don't, you don't exercise power without limitation. God is the only one who stands outside of time. He's the only one. He's the only one. Folks, listen. Uh, we have to celebrate with people who are coming to faith in Jesus. We have to celebrate with them. We've got to celebrate with them, right? We can't be like, okay, listen, uh, yeah, send them an email. Listen, I know it's been 12 hours since your great conversion, but you need to know this. There's a potluck next week, and you're going to have to be there. Right? You're going to have to be there. If you're not there, we will judge you. We'll talk about you. If you show up and you got the wrong clothes on, mm, you know, uh, uh, gets uncomfortable. You, 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 do you, anybody tracking with me? Dude, listen the people who showed up at five and worked one hour were paid. They were paid. I listened to a, I listened to a podcast this week that actually broke my heart. I'd heard about it. I'd seen uh, videos of this girl getting baptized and she's, you know, she's a celebrity. She's a She's a, uh, a famous tattoo artist. Uh, I'd watched her uh, years ago. Remember when they had like Miami Ink? Anybody ever watch Miami Ink? Okay, well, you kick that rock off yourself. Join the human race, friends. It was, about a, it was about a tattoo shop in Miami, and they brought this girl in. Her name's Kat Von D, and she is like a black and gray uh, tattoo artist, and she did nothing but like... Uh, portraits of people. People would come from all over America to have her tattoo a portrait of a family member, a loved one, a dog, a cat on their body. And she was like, like, it's legit. Like, you're, you feel like you're looking at a picture. And she progressed. She, then, she had a, then she had a show called LA Inc. And, and you know, from the outside, it looked like she was crazy. And then, and then what we don't know in her, in, her, in her podcast, what we don't know is she was raised in Mexico by missionaries. By her, her mom and dad loved Jesus, and her mom and dad brought her up and her siblings up with Christ in her heart. And she simply wandered when she was 14, ran away from home, joined a band, did all the things like the, the guy, the lost son did. Did all those things. Did all those things. And she found herself searching for truth. Lo and behold, right? Lo and behold, that same Jesus that was taught to her when she was a kid is there waiting for her. Somebody say amen. amen. And she 
has this moment where she says, look, all this new age stuff I've been doing, all my friends who are in the new age stuff and tarot cards and all this stuff, they're miserable. Why are they miserable? If it's so enlightening, why are they miserable? And the Holy Spirit was like, hey, 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 I'm still here. I'm still here. Just, baby girl, just come home. She makes a decision for Jesus. She gets baptized. She posts that on her Instagram. And you should see the comments. And there's a lot of them are like, awesome, praise God. So happy for you, I'm praying for you. But the majority of the comments are, you're gonna get your tattoos removed? You're gonna stop wearing black? Can't paint your fingernails black? You ain't got it together yet. And I think, wow. Wow. And as a pastor, I'm thinking about what about our church? What about this group of people? By the way, you're beautiful, but do, do we act that way? Well, we can't, can we? We can't. We have to know that this journey that we're on with Jesus is a work in progress, right? Still to this day, I, I'm no good. I fail all the time. I know you do too. You do too. Nobody has it together. The Bible says that all have fallen short of the glory of God. No one has not sinned except for King Jesus. I think, wow, what if this, like, this teaching that Jesus is teaching here, what if we took this to heart and we're like, yeah, this is what, this is what we're going to be about. This is what we're gonna be about. We're gonna be welcoming and we are gonna, we are gonna just shower people with love and, we, and people, you know, you know what people would say? Hey, but you can't, be affirming their, you can't be affirming their sin. Look, I'm not saying that. I think about it like this and I'm done. What time is it? Like 11, 01? I think about it like this. I think about, what if, like, I had cameras on me, you know, what if, what if my life became like a, like a TV show? I probably wouldn't be a pastor. You feel me? Like, I wonder if, like, every move, every word, every thought that came out of my brain, every conversation was was documented. I don't know if you could probably say Jason Kinder's a pastor because he really rarely makes the right decisions. And you would be correct. But I have a feeling the same goes for you, right? If we're honest, right? Those who uh, don't think so, uh, just keep polishing your halos and we'll join you later, right? But man, what if we really took this to heart? And we said, yeah, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna celebrate with the ones who were hired at five and they got a full day's pay. The reward has been given to them too. And we didn't stand up and say, hey, listen, we didn't remind the church all the time. We didn't remind everybody that was around us how much we've done for the kingdom of God. And we just simply loved God because of his awesome generosity. Pray with me. Father, we love you. We thank you. We thank you so much for your word. We thank you for just speaking to us through your Holy Spirit. I would ask that you, oh, do you just, Father, help us put people in our path that need you. Give us people to love. Give us people to love. Give us people to love. We praise you. We give you, Father, all the glory, honor. We give you our lives. And we thank you so much 
for your son, Jesus. We thank you for his sacrifice on the cross and his blood that was shed for my life. We thank you for all that. And all God's people said, amen.